depending on how the knife cuts, you may say, oh, it's not quite performing where I'd like it to. So at that point you would hone, you'd put it on a ceramic or you'd steal it. And then you should see a difference. That action should impart a difference to the knife and you should feel it when you go back to cutting. If it's still not cutting, that's an indication that you now need to stone it. And once you come off the stone, you should see a significant difference and the knife is really cutting now. And then as that begins to dull and you don't see the performance, then you put it back on the hone. Okay, so you've honed your knife and the edge still hasn't come back yet. The knife is still very dull. So now it's time to hit the sharpening stone. You're going to use the sharpening stone in the same method that you use the steel. We can use the matchbook as a guide. We still want to hit that 15 degree angle mark and we're going to need a little bit of water on our stone. Now this particular stone doesn't require pre-soaking. It's not going to use a lot, of, a lot of water. So I can just put a little bit of water on the surface. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold the knife in my right hand and then spread my left hand over the blade for nice even pressure. Now you can move this blade straight back and forth like this on both sides or you can make a sweeping arcing motion across the stone and then flip to the other side. And this first stone, the job of this first stone is to create two surfaces that come together. So right now we have a dull edge that looks something like that. And we need to remove enough material to create a new edge. And when we grind this surface away on the sharpening stone, we need to go to the point where these two surfaces actually intersect and they will create something that's called a burr. If I wipe off the grit and pull my finger along this way, I can actually feel the wire edge on this side. And that's the indication that it's time to go to the next stone. This is a combination stone. So we have a much finer grit on this side. I'll put a little bit of water on the stone. Wipe the grit off from the previous stone. Same approach. And I'm just polishing those two surfaces that I created. And then I'm going to switch from side to side. And my pressure is going to lighten for the last few strokes. Wipe the moisture and the grit off. And if I was successful, I should be able to slice that paper easily. So you can, take, you can see that it takes just a few minutes and you can incorporate this into your cooking. If you were to steal your knife and it didn't come back, you can stop cooking for just a couple of minutes, break your stone out, hit the coarse side a couple of times, find the wire edge, flip it to the fine side, a couple of strokes, 10 strokes on either side, and you're back to easily cutting tomatoes, piercing the skin without any trouble, or the paper on an onion, which can be very slick, you should be able to just slice right through that with ease. So we've gone from sharp to dull to sharp again in just a few minutes. This is really easy to do. And actually this is a part of the cooking process. There will be times when you're using your knives and you'll realize Gee, it's not cutting the way I want it to. And you go to your sharpening hone and hone it a few times, steal your knife a few times and see if it brings the edge back. If it doesn't, if you go back to cutting and it doesn't quite come back to where you want it to be, then it's time to break up the stone. It just takes a few minutes. That took maybe five minutes to take a knife that was completely dull to be in sharp enough to cut paper, cut tomatoes and cut onions. This is really simple to do. The tools are easily available and you can do this. It just takes a little bit of practice and it will make cooking uh, and cutting your vegetables and food so much more of a pleasure.